Welcome everyone, uh, my name is Michał and in today's tip of the week we're going to talk about using the V-Ray displacement modifier to achieve this kind of grass effect. So, see you in 3ds Max. What we have in our scene is a piece of geometry that will uh, imitate our ground. We have a simple tree, it even has no real leaves, just poise. We have also a camera and a direct light to imitate the sun. There's also this geometry that fakes a background. It is also lit with an HDRI image under 8 environment slot. The first thing we do here is to make our plane look more natural like a hill. Going to give it some connects. Pretty square. Now we're going for the two of the smooth. Collapse it. Choose some polys to give it more detail. and more iterations now we will use the paint deformation tool to give it little bumps and curves to look to give it even more detail and make it look more natural When you finished adding detail to your ground, now it's time to make a map for our displacement. The first thing is to give a mapping to our geometry. Let's say planner will do for now. Just remember to click fit. Now open the material editor slot and make a new material. Add the material. Then go to the diffuse slot and choose the cellular. The very important thing to do here is to set the source to XSplit map channel. This makes this basically makes your UV map modifier active. Now add the material and you can watch it in the display on your in your viewport. But first reduce the size something like this would do as you can see it's too big but for tweaking it's alright I will do the spread and the need threshold Then I will decrease this size again, something like this. Maybe this was too much. And now, when we have our map, 
click your right mouse button on it and select render map. Remember to choose proper dim dimensions for your map. In that case, it's 2048 by 2048. Choose a folder to save your map and click render. When we rendered our map, we can make another viewer material. Add it to our ground and add this map we created. As you can see, the spots are too big, so we must help ourselves with mapping. So instead of 957 let's go for something like 300 let's make a box for to fill uh, the scale as you can see still Quite too big. Maybe two fifty by two fifty. And now it's time to use our viewer displacement modifier. The important thing in a, with zero displaced modifier is that when making a terrain, terrain and a ground, grass and stuff like that, is always to the mapping it's faster. The second thing important is the amount and shift. It's basically the height of the grass uh, and the resolution and precision. precision. Uh, and I show you why. Mm. So, uh, give it a texture, we run it, it's mapped like this, we can rid of this map in the diffuse slot, we don't need that. We can uh, left. We can uh, set the amount to twenty and minus five, and the resolution. Uh, I always do this like uh, the resolution of maps, so twenty forty eight. Precision. I'll do this like on sixteen. This is uh, the quality of your displacement. The other very important thing. To remember when using viewer displacement is to go to your render settings and in the settings tab change the dynamic memory limit. Uh, it is said that you should make it like a half of your RAM. It's for better performance and render times. And now it's time to make a test render so select a region and let's render as you can see we are starting to have some nice looking effect here the only problem is that it's white so we need to make a material for it let's change the name of this material Go to the view slot and get the mix map. I downloaded my textures from CG Textures.
one of them is like this, it's grass, green, and uh, the second one is mouse, it's like with these red dots and it has this tint, red kind of tint, it's warmer. This is very good to make your grass look more natural because every straw of grass is different, you don't have like 100% green grass. So in this mix map, choose your bitmaps. The first one will be the green grass. The second one we are going to use is that mossy one. And uh, Notice that they are all mapped on the first channel. I will see if that's good or not. We'll see in a moment. And it's good to have something to mix your textures. In order to do that, let's go to Photoshop and make a mask. Let's create a new image. Remember this image size is 2048 by 2048. Let's use the bucket with 128 gray color and use the filter render clouds. We have something like this and now it would be nice to give it some more contrast something like this uh, let's flatten the image duplicate it and go to the offset As you can see, it's tileable, so we can save a mask and use it. So choose a mask and set the mapping to channel number 2. When we do that we should add another map modifier on the second channel and try to give it something like I don't know, let's make a guess 400 and 400 you can always give it some reflect not too much And that's basically our material. And now it's time for some testing. So let's hit the render button and see how it looks. So our render is done. We can see beautiful green grass. Uh, as you can see, we we have varieties of colors, so the two textures did the job and the mask we did in Photoshop made all the colors so thanks to it it's not 100% green so it looks more natural this is I think this is a good approach for creating grass for architectural visualization 
and uh, besides it's all also a good layer under geometry grass which uh, is used very often in that kind of scenes and I think we'll talk about this in the next tip of the week and uh, so in conclusion Vera displacement modifier 2D mapping for creating landscape grass and uh, terrain texturing and texture channels this is very important to give it proper mapping because without mapping the displacement modifier won't work the amount and the shift that gives you the height and the resolution and precision that gives you quality the other thing is the dynamic memory limit uh, more the better depends on your machine here we have a test render with different heights for the grass you must remember that it depends on the camera angle and the scale of your scene as for the mapping it is very crucial to have a proper scene scale so thank you for watching and see you in the next tip of the week